guys, welcome to my next um, YouTube video. I am going to do a whole face of Tarte Cosmetics that I recently bought. And um, this will just be an easy, simple, everyday look tutorial that I typically do. And I hope you guys look forward to it. So here is my face without makeup. I'm just showing you the complexion of both sides. I do have some acne scars. So I already primed my face and put on contacts. Make sure to prep your face and your hair. Um, so I should have combed my hair prior to this, but I'll know for next time. The face oil right now and products will be listed at the bottom of the description box. So put some of the oil and apply it all over the face like a new primer here. I found that applying the oil first onto my face helped more than when I tried mixing both the oil and the foundation together as I would do for an Urban Decay product. So your neck is also part of your face, so don't neglect that. So I'm grabbing a flat top brush I normally use for foundation application. And this is the Shape Tape foundation that we're going to use in porcelain. When a foundation comes with that sort of sponge applicator, I apply it directly on my face, especially because this is for my personal use and not for use on other people like my clients. Feel free to use a sponge or any other um, personal applicators that you like to use, but I find using this brush helps buff everything so quick and in my everyday makeup routine, this is all I use. Even for if I use all my clients, it's the same type of brush I would use for them. Now I realize I look like a ghost with this foundation so far because it is quite a bit lighter than my normal skin tone, but sometimes it's fine to go with a lighter uh, foundation color than it is to go for a darker one because we can always fix a lighter one rather than a darker color. Try to always match your foundation color, but in this case I bought mine online so I didn't do that in the beginning. I'm opening the darker side of the concealer to do my contour. I usually always use a cream first before I powder over. I take my contour game really seriously because I have a particular round face that I like shaped and sculpted to the way of my liking. Just make sure to buff it all out so that there's no streaks on your face or any discoloration that we don't want the face not matching to the neck. I always apply my face powders last it's because it's just been a habit of mine to make sure that I don't have excess powder at the end flaking over everything. So we're going to start prepping the eyes with eyeshadow primer of course. And um, the purpose is to ensure that the eyeshadows last longer and they show up more brilliantly rather than when you just apply it alone on the skin. Make sure that when you are applying any product over your eyes that you're using the ring finger all because it is the finger on your hand that applies the lightest pressure possible. You don't want to have excess wrinkles showing in the future. I'm using the Costal Sense palette for those of you wondering. I'm taking a soft brush here to apply my first highlighting color. We're going to take the white color as shown and apply it to the brow bone. Next we're taking this light taupe color and this is being applied on the crease. Make sure it's a nice soft transition color, so we're going to brush that on and make sure to blend it out later. Taking a darker brown color, we will apply this to the edges of the eye to give it more depth. As I'm applying this color, I am bringing it into the crease a little bit more. I find that using circular motions help to enhance the color where I want it to and if I want to blend I use more of the sweeping motion.
so I'm taking this gold shimmery eyeshadow powder and applying it all over the lids to give it a brightening effect. From here I just thought I'd show you a close-up of my face of how I'm applying the eye makeup. Um, please don't mind the hair, thank you. <laughs> So using that same taupe color, I am just putting a little bit of color underneath the eyes. So I'm using a white shimmer crayon to highlight the inner corners of my eyes. Taking a, any black pencil liner, we're going to line the upper waterline and the lower waterline. So please take your time with this part and don't tug too hard on your lower lid. Here is my most favorite part of makeup is putting on my signature winged liner. All because I like my liner as sharp as knife and as dark as my soul. So a lot of people have been asking me how to do my wing liner and make it even just try to connect the dots with it go little streaks at a time and then you'll build up uh, enough skill to do it all in one in one swoop And the other side to make sure it's even. If you're stuck, make sure to use your eyebrows as a guide. And of course, curl with them lashes because mine are super straight downward lashes. They have to be lifted. Pick your favorite mascara, but this is the Tarte 4-in-1 mascara, and it actually does a pretty darn good job at making my lashes lengthen more. You can see the difference already. As you can see, I'm trying to put the mascara wand right to the root and roll the wand upward so it curls the lashes even more and coat them better. And of course, I don't forget my bottom lashes because it opens the eye up much more when you have longer lashes on the bottom as well. When you're doing your brows, make sure you brush them first so that they all align properly and you know the basic shape of your brow. And I like to start at the ends because the ends should be the darkest part of the brow before you move inward so that it's lighter. So you don't get this huge dark contrasted brow that will just stand out more than your eyes would. Another tip I like to add is that if you shorten the distance between your brows a tad bit, it will cause an illusion that your nose bridge is higher. And I guess I'm upping my contour game and using this darker concealer color to sculpt my face more. I like using my fingers to apply the cream concealers because it just melts onto the skin better and therefore blends it better. Mm -hmm. 
smaller face. Yes, please. And finally, we're dusting powder all over the face to set everything. And okay guys, it is the finale of the contour game in which I finally apply the powder on top of all the cream that we did. This dual brush from Tarte is perfect for the nose contour, which I can just apply the color directly and blend it with the other side. And for the rest of the contour, I am using a fluffier angled brush. Don't forget to use blush for the apples of the cheeks. I tend to go very light on my blush. And now I'm using the cream highlighter to apply to the nose bridge, a little bit to the forehead, to the cheekbones where it's most prominent of the face. I also like to touch up on the brow bone. This is my favorite nude lip gloss that I received from my, one of my best friends. It is not too dark or too bright that it would take away from the eyes. Feel free to use a lip liner beforehand or a lip brush to apply this, but I like the applicator. It's very easy to use and pretty precise for me to shape my lips at the same time that I fill it. I'm finally fixing my hair with this leave-in conditioner. It goes onto the hair dry or damp, whichever, and basically takes away all the frizz without me washing it. It's perfect for if you don't really want to style your hair, but it looks really smooth at the same time. We are finally done. I really hope you guys enjoyed this look. And don't forget, we're just enhancing what we already have. So be happy with yourself.